Good day, everyone. Welcome once again to Education 505 Research Seminar and Practicum. In this video lecture, I will discuss the topic, how to formulate research questions. And this video lecture is part of a series of video lectures on how to write a thesis or dissertation proposal as a final requirement of the course research seminar and practicum. As you can see in the first slide, there are four major topics that I will cover in this video lecture. The first one is a very brief discussion on the meaning, nature, and dynamics of research questions. And then the second is a very brief discussion on the importance of research questions. And then third is um, types of research questions. And then the discussion will end with, um, with a discussion on techniques in formulating research questions. So the main trajectory of this, of this um, lecture is on the techniques in formulating research questions, but it's always a good idea as I've mentioned in my previous or my, in my other video lecture, video lectures, that is always a good idea to introduce or to teach our students first the what and the why before we teach them the how. So even if the discussion on the techniques in formulating research questions is very short, but I need to discuss first the what and the why. So let's start with, um, a brief discussion on the meaning, nature, and dynamics of a research question. So what are research questions? The research questions are the main questions that researchers seek to answer in this research projects. In other words, research questions are exactly what researchers want to find out in their work. And by the way, I wrote my notes here, and what I will do is, just like in my other video lectures, um, I, I read my notes and do some side discussions. Okay. And uh, let's proceed. And it is important to note that the research questions are directly derived from the research aims and research objectives. So as I will show in the last part of this, uh, video lecture when I present to you some techniques on how to formulate your research questions, we have to remember that this is three important points, research aim, research objectives, and research questions are in line with each other, okay? So that's what I would like to show here, that our research questions are directly derived from research aims and research objectives. And so what is the importance of uh, research, research questions? Why the need for research questions? First, without research questions, researchers or well, research projects become endless, undirected random walk of observations. So in other words, uh, just like uh, when, when young scholars, when they write their, their background of the study or rational of the study, when they don't have a clear problem to address, the discussion is very complicated and, and it seems like they are just getting thoughts, random thoughts from somewhere to anywhere and they're just writing randomly and to the point that we can see the logic and coherence behind the writing. Uh, so the same principle applies in conducting the research as a whole. If we don't have a research problem that will guide us in data gathering or in gathering our data of our research and then in the analysis and interpretation parts and then conclusion and recommendation, then again, the research project becomes simply an endless undirected random walk of observations. So, um, and so, um, for us to be guided properly in the conduct of the entire stretch of the research, then we need to have a clear, researchable, a clear questions that are directly in line with the research aim and research objectives. If this is the case, that is, if research projects are simply endless, undirected, random work of observations, then we cannot find any scientific rigor at all in this endeavor. 
indeed it is not research in the strict sense of the word. So when we say research, there must be some scientific rigor in it. And, and, and some of the science of the of, of, of the scientific rigor in research, aside from other any rules or indicators of a scientific rigor in research, in research is that there is a clear research questions that will guide us researchers in data gathering and in other tasks that we need to fulfill in the other parts of the research. Thus, research questions are not only important, they are fundamental to scientific research. Because once we have formulated our research problem or gap and then develop our research or working title and then articulate the research goal and then and then articulate the research, research objectives and that's the time that we formulate the research questions. So they are in line with each other. But most importantly, research questions provide researchers with an area to focus with regarding the research problem. So once the research questions are properly framed or formulated according to our research aim and objectives, then this will provide us a, 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 an area to focus with now when investigating a particular problem. Because of course the phenomenon could be huge. The phenomenon under investigation can be complex, but with, with, Research questions were able to focus, you know, um, efforts by narrowing down the research aims. Okay, so research questions narrow down research aim or aims or objectives, and then of course again that will uh, that will set the sail of the uh, research journey. It will guide the researcher in data gathering and interpretation framing the conclusion and things like that. So in this way, research questions set boundaries for the area to be explored and the research and the answers that researchers seek. So take notes, for example, uh, especially in qualitative research, because not just in qualitative research, in, in, in both quantity and quantity, what we discuss in the body of the research based on the data gathered are direct answers to the questions we raise in the statements of the problem, okay? So they must be in line with each other. And so that we are able to smoothly develop or complete the entire research, all our activities, data gathering and interpretation and framing the conclusion and other stuff must be a direct response to the the, the research question stated in the background of the study. And lastly, regardless of whether it is a qualitative research or quantitative research project, research questions provide researchers with a way to navigate the writing and research process. So researchers can move easily in crevices within the phenomenon under investigation because he or she knows exactly what to look for because he or she has the questions at hand in mind in doing that. And so if you know exactly what you're looking for because you're guided by the research questions, then you will be able to select what will be gathered, for example, in the data gathering procedure and what would be included in your analysis, like in thematic analysis and so on and so forth. Because as is well known, if you employ some kind of interview, for example, as your research instrument, you have a, you have a thick, you know, uh, 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 interview transcripts. And when you, you know, ap uh, apply thematic analysis, and so you have to look for um, uh, themes there, um, in your interview transcripts and, 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 and of course, in doing so, the research questions will guide us in, do, in, 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 in fulfilling the task. Because no matter how thick, how huge the data, the, the, the interview transcripts you have, you can easily identify the themes of that, of the interviews, of the transcript, because you have the question, you have the research questions that will guide you. 
So in this way, researchers can avoid all about research papers by posing straightforward and specific research questions that help them support a specific thesis or argument. Okay, so, so much for the main reasons why the need for research questions. I will proceed uh, now to the discussion the types of research questions. There are four basic types of research questions, namely exploratory, descriptive, causal, and comparative research questions. Let me start with exploratory research questions. Exploratory research questions are those that help researchers gather preliminary information that will help define the research problem or a hypothesis if you're doing experimental research in the hypothesis. The purpose of exploratory research question is to help researchers gain a better understanding of what they are looking for. It is important to note that exploratory research questions are formulated when First, little is known about a particular phenomenon. So we are not yet familiar or too familiar with the phenomenon under investigation. And so we need to explore more about its nature and dynamics, for example, and the specificity and the context of the research problem that, that, that we want to see at first in the research. And so in this case, if we want to explore the nature and dynamics of something, of the phenomenon under investigation, then an exploratory research, most particularly case study. Sometimes you can use descriptive research design and quantitative research to explore something. But when it comes to you know, exploring a, a particular phenomenon wherein you do not know yet the variables that you need to, you know, that the, the variables that you want to measure. And so a case study is more fitting in this case. So you, you we conduct a case study using exploratory research questions to know more about the phenomenon under investigation. Second, we use exploratory exploratory research. Second, we use exploratory research and employ, of course, and use exploratory exploratory research questions if the subject is, is extremely complex. So it's Aside from the fact that little is known about the topic, sometimes the phenomenon is too complex that, that it needs some kind of, you know, in-depth investigation or exploration. Um, uh, so in, in this case as well, uh, mostly this is qualitative um, research, most particularly case study because because again, um, the, the problem, again, the researcher has not yet fully made sense of the meaning, nature, and dynamics of the particular phenomenon. Because mostly in, in quantitative research, when we do quantitative research, one of the rules of sounds of follow is we need to define our variables first before we conduct, before we proceed with the research. Because as we as we already know in 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 quantitative research our primary concern is to measure the relationship between and among variables that is why there is statistics there there are mathematical computations there because it's all about quantitative this quantitative research is mostly about measuring the relationship between and among variables and so if my goal if our goal in quant if our main goal in quantitative research is to measure the relationship between and among variables then obviously the first thing that we need to do is define the variables and if we're going to define the variables, that means we have more, we have fully made sense already. We have understood fully the phenomenon. But in the case of exploratory research, again, the phenomenon is not yet fully understood. The researcher has not fully made sense of the phenomenon or the phenomenon under investigation, the issue, phenomenon, whatever that is, the subject under and their investigation is too complex, too complicated that it it does not that that uh, that employing a quantitative uh, research or method is more is not appropriate. So again, in this case, uh, we employ case study because the phenomenon or the subject or the issue is too complex. And so before we before we before we apply some kind of before we employ quantitative research method before we determine 
and measure the relationship between and among variables, we got to understand first the phenomenon, understand first the situation, understand first the problem, understand first the issue. And that's where exploratory, most particularly case study comes in. Third, results from previous studies are ambiguous or have significant flaws. So we get to explore the nature and dynamics of the problem. And yeah, we need to measure the relationship between the among variables here. We got to just know, just familiar, familiarize ourselves with the problem under investigation. For example, if the research topic is eating disorder among American teenagers, then we can have the exploratory question. How common are eating disorders among American teenagers? It's very simple. If the research topic is the effect of social media on the attention span of teenagers, then we can have the exploratory survey question, in this case, you know, a quantitative. We can have the exploratory survey question which reads, on average, how many hours in a day do you use social media? Now, so much for the exploratory research question. Let me proceed now to descriptive research questions. Descriptive research questions are used to describe a situation or phenomenon. These types of questions are used to gather information about the nature of a particular phenomenon and its characteristics. And as we can see, descriptive research questions help in understanding the what, where, when, and how of a particular phenomenon, issue, or subject, or problem under investigation. Here, important variables can be rigidly defined using descriptive research, unlike qualitative research where the subjectivity and responses makes it relatively difficult to get a grasp on the overall picture. So as you can see, descriptive research questions are most often used in quantitative research, most particularly descriptive research design. Just, just a brief recap on the four major research designs under quantitative research method. We have descriptive research design, correlational research design, experimental research design, and quasi-experimental research design. So descriptive research questions are mostly used in quantitative research most particularly descriptive research design. Now, descriptive research questions will be used to quantify, quantitative research method, to quantify a single variable that a researcher is interested in. For example, if the researcher is interested in consumer behavior, and let's say she is interested in the cost respondents would be willing to pay for a men's lifestyle magazine. Then we may have the following question or research question. How much does the respondent is willing to pay for a men men's lifestyle magazine? Let me proceed to the third basic type of research question. That is causal research questions. Causal research questions are used to identify causal relationships between variables to understand cause and effect relationships. And for this reason, causal research questions are also called relationship-based research questions. And as we can see, causal research questions are designed to determine whether one or more variables causes or affects one or more outcome variables. Example of causal research questions are, what is the relationship between disposable income and location among young adults in Singapore? Second, what is the impact of reward system on productivity? Third, what is the relationship between job satisfaction and salary among Manila residents? So as you can see, there is a causal relationship, relationship cause and effect relationship between and among variables in these questions. And lastly, um, the fourth basic type of research questions, we have comparative research questions. And comparative research questions are designed to help researchers identify 
clear differences between two or more groups based on one or more variables. So we compare two or more variables and see the differences and similarities. For instance, a typical comparative research question will be will, will begin by asking respondents about difference between a particular variable. For example, what is the difference in time spent on video games between people aged 12 to 16 and 17 to 21? So we get to compare these two groups of people according to that particular variable, yeah? time spent on video games. And examples of a causal research questions are, what is the relationship between disposable income and location among young adults in Singapore? So we talk about, uh, I used that example a while ago, but that could also be used as a, a causal uh, research questions. And now, um, sorry. Um, uh, that's the the the, <laughs> the previous one is example of a a a causal research questions. I'm uh, um, these are the examples of 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 uh, comparative research questions. First, what is the difference in the daily calorie intake between men and women in New York? Second, um, second, what are the differences in attitude towards online shopping between millennial adults and older people? And third, what is the difference in the attitude towards politics between Asians and Mexicans in Canada? So as you can see in this three, as you can see in these three examples, um, it talks about the differences between two or more variables. Okay, so before I proceed, before I proceed to a brief discussion on some techniques in formulating the research questions, please take note that my discussion here on the types of research questions is quite uh, brief. I just um, very briefly describe and discuss it because I will devote specific video lectures on the type of research questions and the type of research later on, the type of research designs. So I will be, this is part of the course research methods. I will, again, I will be recording uh, lectures on research methods and, and, and part of that uh, uh, course are the types of research designs under two major types of research. So in terms of methods, so we have, we have two major types of research in, in terms of methods, qualitative and quantitative. And later on, we had a third one, a famous mixed method. I will talk about it later anyway. But there are just two major types of research in terms of method, quality, and quantity. And we know too well that under these two methods, we have different research designs. So under qualitative research method, we have the following major common research design. Phenomenological research design, grounded theory. We have historical research design, philosophical research design. We have ethnography or ethnographic research design. We have case study, narrative design, and, and, and the like. Under quantitative research methods, we have four major research designs, as I already mentioned a while ago. Descriptive research design, experimental research design, correlational research design, and quasi-experimental research design. So I will devote one lecture for each research design soon as part of the course methods of research. And so, and, and this discussion types of research questions will be covered there thoroughly because what I will do in that video lecture is I will discuss, for example, what is a case study? And in that discussion, um, I cannot avoid talking about how to formulate questions or research questions in case study and that would involve of course that would that, that would that would include exploratory research questions when i go to for example discussing the meaning nature and dynamics of descriptive research design i cannot avoid talking about descriptive research questions so as you can see again um, my discussion on these four basic types of research questions is to uh, simply appear to be broad strokes because I will again devote another video lecture to that. Okay, so let me proceed now to the last part of this um, uh, 
video lecture on the techniques in formulating research questions. I will present two, two samples and techniques just very briefly. Um, this is the first one. Please take note that, again, there is no one size fits all rule in, in formulating the research question or research questions. Some scholars would say when you formulate your research question, you have to be concise, specific, or you use, for, for, for example, the acronym SMART, you have to be specific, measurable, and things like that. Um, and then, and then with a lot of uh, steps to follow. And so, and, and, and so scholars have their own way of formulating the research questions, as long as the research aim, objectives, and the research questions are in line with each other. So what I'm presenting now is my own way of formulating the research question. Because as you can see in my previous lectures, especially on how to write the background of the study, there uh, in the background of the study, I discuss the, the I, I, discuss, I articulate the, the research problem. I explain in full the research problem or the research gap that I want to see addressed in the paper. And after that, I, I articulate the research goal or the research aim. And then after the research aim, I articulate the thesis statement. And once I am done explaining to my uh, readers the, 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 the thesis statements, my thesis statements, then I will proceed to formulating the research questions. So the research questions um, a part of the of the background of the study, and then as I mentioned previously uh, in the early part of this video lecture, that the research question should be the research question uh, uh, is derived directly from the research aim and the research objectives. So that's the style that I use that I that I use in my in my um, research papers. And this is the style or the technique that I share with you at this point in how to formulate research questions. Strong, valid, researchable research questions. So the first, first is uh, uh, state the research aim of your proposed research, of course. For example, you may say the study aims to determine the factors affecting the SBM level of practice in the, in the division of Bolivan. And let's see that. Yeah. So uh, again, the 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 research aim is of this. The, the research aim of this uh, of my research of the sample reads the study aims to determine the factors affecting the SBM level of practice in the division of the year. So that's the first step. The first step you state the research aim. After that. You second is you formulate the, your research objectives based on the research aim. For example, you may say one to identify the factors that cause public high schools in the division of Bolivian to perform law in the implementation of school-based management program, and second to determine the challenges and difficulties that school administrators and teachers encountered in complying with these standards. So once we already have the research aim and the research objectives, we can now easily formulate our research question. And the third step involves, or the first, uh, the third step involves, or includes drawing questions from the objectives. For example, and it reads, what are the factors that cause public high schools in the division of Belirant to perform law in, in the implementation of school-based management program? And second, what are the challenges and difficulties that school administrators and teachers encountered in complying with the standards? So as you can see the questions, we just transform the objectives into, into questions. And so the objectives is like action words to identify, to determine what's in the, in the research questions, we just say, what are, and how do we, we just again transform objectives into all such questions. So as you can see, the, the the research aim, the research objectives, and the research questions are in line with the, with each other. 
And as you can see, this is um, a, an example of research, research questions for a qualitative research, for a research using employing qualitative research method and case study in this case. Now, let me um, share with you la the last example, which is um, uh, which employs a, a quantitative uh, research method, most particularly correlational research design. So, and, and see how we develop a research question from it. So the working title of the second example is a correlational study examining the relationship between restorative practices and school climate in selected elementary schools in large mid-Atlantic urban school in uh, urban school district. So this is um, a sample of a PhD dissertation in one of the universities in the United States. And this is a correlational research from from, from the words correlational, correlational studies. So obviously, again, this study is a quantitative one employing correlational research design. And then um, the, the quantitative research has this, research aim, objective, and research question. And so the aim, uh, the research aim reads, the study aims to examine the relationship between restorative practices and school climate in selected elementary schools in large mid-Atlantic urban school district. In particular, it will explore the perceptions of school staff members regarding restorative practices and school climate. So that's the aim of the research. And then the, and then the researcher drew objective from that from that aim the objective reads to determine the relationship between staff perception of the extent of implementation of restorative practices and school climate among selected elementary schools in a large mid-atlantic urban school district and then from the research aim and research objective the researcher the phd students now drew research question from that and please take note that I can show you the sample, of course, but uh, of the dissertation, but I don't have time now. But the point here is, look, her dissertation has only one research question. And this is one of the famous universities in the United States. So what I'm trying to say here is, you don't have to have so many questions in your, in your research. This one is approved with the thesis committee panel or members or the thesis committee or the dissertation committee. And it, it only has one research question. And it's fine to have just one research question because in the first place, well, when you, well, the, the main intention of the paper is to simply um, examine the relationship between you know, these two variables. And that's his, and, and, and that, that's her only overarching question. But when she gathers the data, of course, in the questionnaire, in his survey questionnaire, for example, in his survey, in her survey, or in his test, or whatever instrument uh, uh, she employs, then she has a lot of sub questions there. But all of those questions are in line with the overarching question, which is the research question. Anyway, again, just to reiterate and emphasize, this PhD dissertation in one of the famous universities in the United States, in the United States has just one research question, even if it's correlational research design. And the research question uh, reads, what is the relationship between staff perception, perceptions of the extent of impl implementation of restorative practices and school climate among selected school, elementary schools in a large mid-Atlantic urban school district? That's it. So I hope uh, with these two techniques, you, you will be guided thoroughly, uh, properly in formulating your research questions. This is for a case sample um, uh, uh, of a technique in formulating research questions in a case study or to be in general qualitative uh, research. And then uh, this is a sample of how to, of a technique in formulating research questions in, in a quantitative uh, research, using a quantitative research method. 
So I hope uh, this video lecture helps you in framing or formulating your research questions. And I uh, wish you all the best in your research proposal writing. Thank you. God bless. And I wish you all the best. Bye-bye for now.